Hi, I'm Kenny Klaus, and this is State 48 Homeowner. Hey, my friends, welcome back to the State 48 Homeowner Podcast. And we are back with the Dirt Whisperer, RK Bob Brown. Welcome back, Bob. Great. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we uh, hinted at it the last time you were on the podcast. We want to talk about what to do when there's soil movement around a slab. Uh, a couple years ago, we had Kurt Peterson on the podcast back when it was just audio back in episode 35. We were talking with him and Suzanne Lynch about an episode she had under her house. She had uh, she started to notice some water. Uh, her water bill was going up and she thought, hmm, I wonder if the city's pay, you know, charging us more. And all of a sudden she started to notice some floor cracks, started to you know, investigate a little bit more, had some people come out and they gave her a huge estimate and she thought she'd get a second opinion and uh, realized they, they were saying uh, that uh, everything was sinking. And uh, Kurt said, well, no, things are going up. And so let's, let's talk about what do we do in the event that we start to notice that things are just not going right with, with our, <clears throat> with our slab, with our foundation, uh, if maybe we've got a sudden uh, change in our water bill, <laughs> if we uh, maybe <clears throat> our neighbors have done something with their pool or something that, because I think a lot of the time it is water. Would Correct. you say that's water accurate? Water is the catalyst. That's right. So if, if we notice something like that's happening, what are our first steps? Well, uh, the very first thing I would do is call a, 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 a leak detector. Uh, somebody like American Leak Detection or uh, Arizona Leak Detection, I think they might still be around. Uh, there's a bunch of leak detectors. Don't call a plumber. <laughs> Plumbers <laughs> will tell you, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll send my camera down there and we'll figure it all out. Yeah, no. Uh, don't call a plumber. Call a leak detector. Okay. Uh, how many houses I've gone to where people have said, yeah, I've had my plumber out and he couldn't find anything. And sure enough, the leak detector finds it every time. Uh, so call a leak detector. And uh, many times that alone will just solve almost all the problems right, right there on the spot. But in addition to that, you might look around. Sometimes you might have uh, irrigation lines that are leaking. Uh, you might have uh, a... Uh, uh, where the hub is, where it, it, it controls everything. Those leak all the time. Uh, those need to be replaced. Um, sometimes, you know, the air conditioning uh, condensate drips right next to the foundation all the time. That's not a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or as you said, pools, pools. Every time I go to a house, I see, you know, the deco drain, you know, that catches the water from the splashing pool, right? And I look at the end on either end to see where it goes doesn't go anywhere it just stops <laughs> well that's crazy because now that thing's going to crack it's going to fill up with water what's it going to do it's an injector it's going to inject water right under the house now if you're in houston maybe you don't care about that but in phoenix we do we, we don't want water any from any source getting anywhere near our foundations because it's been a desert for hundreds of thousands of years and we want to keep it that way because change in moisture content is what causes problems and we'll also see when we go and and uh, when we're representing a buyer in a, in a purchase, that's one of the things that we'll see during an inspection is that, yes, when the house was built, uh, it was graded correctly and it was graded. So everything flows away from the house. And yet somebody decided, hey, I'm going to do some landscaping in my backyard. I'm going to make things look really, really pretty. I'm going to make these hills. I'm going to put this really, really cool putting green. In, and it's going to have these really cool hills that's going to be really challenging to put on. And guess what? I've just made this entire side yard that's going to drain towards the house. Yeah, happens a lot. I see it all the time. People have these groovy ideas, but they don't understand the problem. And landscapers don't understand it either, by the way. They'll, they'll, I had one landscaper say, yeah, I did a really great job. I channeled the water and I made this kind of like little mini dry well out of rocks. And I'm like, well, how far away from the house? Oh, you know, like three feet away from the house. I'm like, ah, oh, you just create an injection point for, for the water to get under the house. You know, if, if you're going to do something like that, it's got to be 20 feet away from the house, not three feet away from the house, you know? So we do the leak detection. Right. And, and then, then what, so, what's so our next step? 
if, if it was me, I would call uh, a forensic uh, geotechnical engineer. Uh, it's okay. easy to find a foundation repair guy and get, have him come out for free, but you know, free comes with a price tag. They're going to want to mm -hmm. sell you something, right? Uh, and the guy that's doing it gets a commission. He goes home hungry if he sells nothing, right? Yeah. He might even lose his job. So the fact of the matter is, uh, call call a forensic geotechnical engineer. They will come out. They got no axe to grind. And guess what? They're they're. they're their ethics are overseen by the Board of Technical Registration. If they do something unethical, they can be they can be uh, sanctioned for it. Now, they an engineer cannot uh, take anything based on commission. That's right. It's against the law for them to take anything on a commission basis. So they they can work by the hour or they can work by the job. But uh, and and that's the way it ought to be. They come out. They they look objectively unbiased and tell you, okay, here's the problem, here's what to do about it. Now, part of the problem is we've got to train these geotechnical engineers how to come up with plans and specifications because they're great at writing reports. <laughs> and they'll, they'll say something like, you know, improve the drainage on your house or put some piers on the east end or something, you know, in, in writing with no plans and specs. Wow, then, then, then what do you do? You call out three, three contractors and they give you three different plans, uh, you know, and and one might give you 10 peers and one that might give you three peers. How do you know which one's right? You don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. You should have a plan specified by the engineer that tells you put the peers in this place or maybe don't put any peers in at all or whatever. That's what you need to have. So what's our next step? So then, uh, then I would uh, call him and hopefully – if the if if the engineer is good, uh, he'll analyze the problem. He'll uh, understand w what the cause is, and he'll help help you understand. Oh, gee, the the soil is done moving, or it's not done moving. You're going to have problems. He might say, you know what, fix the drainage on your house, and let's come back a year later and see how it's doing. We'll monitor it for a while and see if it's done moving. That's cheap. That's easy to do. Mm -hmm. No foundation repairman is going to suggest that, or very few anyway. So uh, the fact of the matter is you, you, you engage this professional. And if he says in the end, if he says, okay, you need some peers. I mean, maybe, maybe you want to hold on to the house for 30 years. Maybe you want to sell it in two years, whatever, go through the due diligence steps, know what you have. Don't be, don't be caught in the middle of a transaction where the home inspector discovers the problem. And then they bring out a foundation repair contractor right in the middle of your escrow. They, they come up with a $60,000 escrow. Guess what's going to happen? Yeah, the whole thing's going to blow up and the, the seller or the buyer is going to head for the hills. Mm -hmm. So be proactive. You know, figure these things out. If you see these problems, if you see serious problems, what do you like? What would you be looking for? Well, cracks in drywall, you know, cracks in floor, uh, you know, concrete cracks for a lot of reasons. You know, all concrete cracks. You can't stop it from cracking. So it might be for movement. It might just be for shrinkage. It might be thermal crack uh, movement, you know, ex expanding and contracting with heat. It could be a lot of things. So you want to look at patterns. Cracks in walls is a really good sign. Doors and yeah. windows out of square. Slopes in floors. Maybe a crack in the floor. Stucco, eh. Stucco cracks for a lot of reasons too. But, yeah. you know, if it's right outside where a drywall crack is and they run parallel or close, that's, you know, that might mean something. That's probably right? a pretty good sign. Yeah. So, you know, you want to look at patterns. It, it, people call me all the time and they have one crack, you know, and they were, they're getting all crazy about it. No, one crack is not, probably not, doesn't mean much. It's not a pattern. It's a crack, you know. The Klaus team is different. With the Klaus team, you have someone on your side. Where you live and make memories is important. We have more unique strategies than anyone else to help you accomplish what matters most to you. We can help you with traditional real estate as well as other options such as our lease purchase programs. We can help you buy first then sell and we can bring you instant offers. We're here to help our neighbors achieve the American dream and help them build wealth through home ownership. For more info or to start your home search, visit us online at klausteam.com. How does this all how does all this stuff work with insurance generally? <laughs> it doesn't. Insurance basically has what they call an earth movement exclusion. And uh, I don't know how they get away with it, but they, I think when they get a bunch of claims and they all get together and say, 
hey, let's figure out how to make an exclusion for this. And that's what they did. And the, the, the states bought off on it. And so now that they, they have this uh, clause in all of their in all of their policies that basically says. If it if, if the damage in your house is caused from earth movement, we don't cover it, period. Now. If you have a plan with floor elevations and, and done by a good engineer five years ago and now you have a problem, you know, a pipe breaks or something and you have drastic movement, you know, in a short period of time, you can call that same engineer out, retake elevations and go and, and get him to contact your insurance and say, yep, we had a broken pipe. Here was the elevations before. Here's the elevations after. I had that happen to me on one of my rental houses. And I had insurance cover it, but it's a tough fight. You have to you have to be prepared. You have to know what you're doing. You have to have your you have to have your ducks in a row, and be prepared to fight a little bit, uh, because that's what'll happen. Last thing, if you could, let's talk about the physics of the piers. Sure. How how mm-hmm. do the piers work? All right. So uh, piers uh, typically. Uh, Here in Arizona, you're going to get two, around the country, you get lots of different things. But here in Arizona, you're going to get basically two things. You're going to either get a helical pier or you're going to get a push pier. So a helical pier is a a round shaft or sometimes they have a square shaft and they have a disc on it. And that disc screws its way down through the dirt and it screws down until it meets really hard dirt and then it locks up. A push pier has hydraulics, hydraulic cylinders like on a tractor, and they push the they push the pipe straight down. They just push it down and it uses the house as a counterweight to push against as they push that pier down. Both products are good products. They have their limitations. If you have a, like a really rocky area, they're probably not going to work real good. Like rocky, I mean like in bouldery, cobbly, big rocks. Uh, then, they're, then they're not going to perform very well. But uh, that's pretty rare. Most of the time they do perform well and they're over-engineered. They'll they're good products. They're good for, you know, 20, 30,000 pounds of capacity. And, you know, you space them six to eight feet on center. You know, the weight on those is going to be, you know, somewhere around five to 8,000 pounds, depending on the type of house it is. So, you know, you're, you're putting something in with 30,000 pounds capacity, actually 60, 30 is the, uh, after you cut it in half for the safety factor, ultimate Mm -hmm. value is 60. And you're putting in something six. You're putting in something that has ten times the capacity of what you're holding. So these products are really good. They're they're engineered well. They hold up well. They do a good job. My problem is not with those piers. They work great. The problem is, do you really need them or not? That's the question, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the thing you should be concerned about. Most of the most of the installers in the Phoenix area do a good job installing piers. The question is, do they really need them? And, that, and that's what we've seen in a, a couple of the cases is that the default diagnosis yeah. was you need these peers. And you know, then when, when a, a geotechnical engineer came in right. realizing, no, we, we've got something that we can do right. different or, right. you know, we, we don't have substance, we have upheaval and you know, we can do this other thing to remediate the, the issue that we don't have to spend, you know, forty fifty thousand uh, dollars We can do these other things and right. uh, remediate the issue and that the first thing doesn't always have to be peers. Sometimes, yeah. yes, the peers is the solution, Correct. but it doesn't always have to be the go-to immediate for, first thing. And, and right. that, you know, having a, a, a geotechnical engineer come out you know, when I was first trained in this business, I don't know when that was, 30 years ago, uh, you know, I, I was a concrete guy and, and I have a, a background in architecture, but I didn't really know foundation. So the, the, the supplier for my product is who trained me. And that's kind of the way it works in the industry. They, the suppliers train everybody. And of course, they train them to sell what? The products that they supply, right? <laughs> and, and he said to me, I've never seen a house yet that didn't need peers. <laughs> that was his default answer to me. Yeah, and, and, and that's absolutely not true. But, you know, I believed it because he was the smart guy and I was learning from him, right? But I found out later it's not really true. <laughs> well, thanks, Bob. Why don't you tell us about Foundation Repair Secrets? 
Sure. So uh, I wrote a book, uh, published it about six months after I sold my company. And you can find it on Amazon or you can find it uh, through my website, Foundation Repair Secrets. Easy to find. It was a bestseller. You'll find it. It's easy. And I, I wrote the book. I didn't really write it to make a lot of money. I wrote it to, 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 to help people, to spread awareness. I want to try to make a difference in the foundation repair industry. I, I've seen it from the inside out. I've, I've, I had a foundation company. I had a forensic engineering company. I know how it should work and I know it's not working. So what I'm doing is trying to help spread awareness so people can protect themselves. They can protect their family and friends and not be taken advantage of because a lot of that is happening right now. So if you want to dive in a little bit deeper, there's some extra resources there. It's not just the book. You can also go in there, uh, get a report. It's the 15 myths of uh, foundation repair. You can get uh, uh, 10 things to ask your foundation uh, 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 inspector, and you can get a link to uh, the book and find some more things about Bob. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us today, Bob. Absolutely. Had a ball. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for spending time with us this week at State 48 Homeowner, the ins and outs of owning an Arizona home. You can connect with us for more information, submit topics you'd like us to further discuss. You can see relevant videos, give us feedback, answer your real estate questions, and more at state48homeowner.com.